The African American Civil Rights Movement has come a long way. With trials and failures, it remains an ongoing conflict in the United States. With high-profile incidents such as the violent Charlottesville March of 2017, bringing this conflict to the front pages of newspapers across the world. From the very beginning, music was an important communication tool for the civil rights movement. Music helped to spread the message, unite people, bring hope to those fighting for the struggle, and give them strength to carry on. During the early 17th century, African slaves were brought to the American colonies to work on the plantations. Taken far away to a cruel new world, the slaves had nothing but their traditions to connect them with their homeland. In the early days of slavery, music was a crucial part of their identity, spirituality, and daily activities. Music has always been part of the freedom struggle from the days of slavery. And spirituals were songs that were told to both express pain and suffering, but also to express hope. They would sing and play drums in small gatherings, but colonists saw these acts as wild, problematic, and idolatrous. This resulted in the creation of secret meetings called camp or bush meetings. During these meetings, religious songs known as spirituals were created. Spirituals became a form of secret communication between slaves and served as codified messages of secret meetings, protests, or even an attempt to escape. As Frederick Douglass said, the songs of the slave represent the sorrows of his heart, and he is relieved by them, only as an aching heart is relieved by its tears. The music evolved, and the fight for emancipation, equal rights, and equal opportunity for African Americans progressed. In the Reconstruction era after the Civil War, African Americans celebrated the first great civil rights victories. The 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment, which granted the right of citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave them the right to vote. However, the years following the Reconstruction, from the late 1800s through the early 1900s, were perhaps one of the most challenging periods during the path of African Americans towards complete freedom. The Ku Klux Klan was formed in 1865, 18 days after the abolition of slavery. The Klan adopted terror tactics to persecute the former slaves and their supporters. Variations of black codes or Jim Crow laws were enacted through ex-Confederate states. Faced with new adversities, African Americans took aid back in spirituals, which helped uplift spirits and now serve the role of providing strength to keep fighting for civil rights. So there were songs like, we are the ones we've been waiting for. So it's like people claiming their own power. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Nobody else gonna rescue us. We are the ones we've been waiting for. See, that's about power. Strange Fruit was a blues song written in 1937 by Jewish left-wing activist Avil Mirapal and is considered the first song that turned black music towards social political activism. Mirapal said that he wrote the song because I hate lynching and I hate injustice and I hate the people who perpetuate it. He wanted to increase white opposition to lynching and overall it critiqued the race terrorism in southern states. Singer Billy Holiday performed this song in 1939 for an integrated cabaret club in New York. Strange Fruit brought attention to the horror of racial problems with the use of strong emotional lyrics. In the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar tree. It is often referred to as the song that started the civil rights movement, and that is mainly because the song spread acknowledgement of the problems and it left a haunting feeling in its listeners. The song itself did not stop lynching in the South, but it did create and inspire many activists who eventually did end it. From this beginning, music went on to play a major part in the growing civil rights movement. Civil rights movement veteran Bruce Hartford said that, the movement relied mainly on the human voice, through sermon, conversation, and above all, song. 
More than the advocacy of organizers, it was the songs that carry the movement's goals, ideals, and fervor into the black communities across the South. During the labor struggle of 1940s, the song, We Shall Overcome, became a crucial part of the civil rights movement. The song was created as a work song under the title, I'll Be a Right Someday. American folk singer and social activist Pete Seeger learned the song from Sylvia Horton, the wife of the co-founder of Highlander Folk School. Seeger went on to perform the song to wide audiences and popularized the unofficial anthem of the civil rights movement. Director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, Wyatt T. Walker, said that one cannot describe the vitality and emotion this song evokes across the Southland. I have heard it sung in great mass meetings with a thousand voices singing as one. I've heard a half dozen sing it softly behind the bars of the Hine County Prison in Mississippi. I've heard the students sing it as they were being dragged away to jail. On August 28, 1963, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom was held. Its purpose was to advocate for civil and economic rights for African Americans. Mahalia Jackson, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, the Freedom Singers, and more artists performed that day. The Freedom Singers were a quartet formed in 1962. They toured the United States with the goal of drawing aid and support to the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. So nonviolence was not just a tactic, it was not just a way of getting a good PR story. It was actually a philosophy, and I think and it was embodied in a lot of the songs. I would call it public love. Public love is seeing potential in people even if you think they're doing things wrong. So in the citizenship schools and in the trainings across the South for the March on Washington, we did talk about that philosophy all the time. And people really lived it and it was reflected in the songs. The Freedom Singers used communal song to empower and educate audiences about the civil rights issues. Songs of the movement gave you energy, a willingness and a wantingness to want to uh, be free. Without the music, that wouldn't have been a movement. Powered by the music, the civil rights movement grew in strength and momentum. On July 2, 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed and signed by President Lyndon B. Johnson. This was an immense milestone for the freedom movement and helped outlaw major forms of discrimination against African Americans. However, as we know today, racism did not completely end. In 2018, African Americans still suffer from many forms of discrimination, including disproportionate levels of violence by police, lower college acceptance rates, and lower average pay, to name a few. Today, traces of the civil rights movement can be seen in the Black Lives Matter movement. Artists like Kendrick Lamar, Beyonce, and many more continue to use music as a platform to draw awareness to the oppression and the need to keep fighting for equal rights. Just like a tree that's planted by